Hello, hello everybody. Hello and welcome to The VoiceOver Network presents a complete guide to getting started in voiceovers. I'm Rachel Naylor and I will be with you for the next four weeks. <gasps> We've got an amazing, exciting, fabulous journey ahead of us um, over the next four weeks and I am so honoured and excited to have you guys all with me on this journey. Uh, let me just... Can you hear me, please? I love it when I see um, some reaction. I can see everybody's coming in now. I know that some of you are gonna be watching this live, some of you are gonna be watching the recording. If you're watching the recording, don't worry, but if you are watching live, please can you just type in, yes, I can hear you, so that I know that I can be heard. <laughs> it's always nice to know that this is definitely going out there, and hello, hello, I can't know. So Coming comments. in. Ah, yes, Stephen. Fantastic. That. Polly, hello. Um, Excellent. Uh, Stu, brilliant. Brilliant. Wonderful. Um, also, I'm sorry for starting the this webinar late. That was due to technical difficulties. No, it was actually due to there were some last minute sign ups on the course. So we were just trying to get people registered and signed up. They were kind of leaving it to sort of last minute, which is great. And um, the people who did leave it to the last minute, fantastic. Great to have you here. But uh, that's why we're a little bit behind. Um, hello, hello, hello. Oh, this is so exciting. Wonderful. Right. So just to, um, just to get started, a quick little introduction. I am Rachel Naylor. I'm the founder of the VoiceOver Network. I'm a voice actor. I am an actor. I'm editor of The Buzz magazine, and I'm also host of the VoiceOver Hour webinar and podcast. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, yeah, so, uh, so lots of things going on. Uh, really, really exciting. But um, we also have joining us on this course, we have the amazing Lisa Fisicaro. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We've got uh, an amazing four weeks um, starting ahead. So we're so excited. Welcome, welcome. Yes. So Lisa is our business operations manager at the VoiceOver Network, and, um, and she will be on, on hand to kind of, um, so you can ask questions as we go along, and she'll, if I miss them coming through on the chat box, she'll kind of interrupt me. And, um, and so she's also around to kind of help with any questions you guys have. Over the next four weeks, we are going to be on the most exciting journey, and I, I, yeah, it's, it's an honor to have you all with us. So, um, so yes, please do ask questions as we go along. Um, you can email us questions too. And what I will do today at the end of this uh, webinar is I will set up a Facebook group, a special Facebook group, which is just for people who are doing this workshop. Um, and I'll make sure I invite you all into it. And then that's somewhere that you can ask questions as well. Because a lot of the time, what, what I find with workshops is that, what's fascinating is the questions that other people ask that you don't think of asking, but you really need to know the answer to that question. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so it's nice to have those questions in a Facebook group so that other people can benefit from the question and the answer. Um, and also it's somewhere where you guys, are, you know, it's all about connecting and supporting each other and, and you're at the start of a very exciting journey. So this group that we've got here, you guys need to kind of, you know, connect with each other, network with each other, help each other out um, and share. You know, if you come across something that, that you're interested, that you think is interesting, you know, feel free to share it in the group. I, I would also like to, I'll do a little, um, we'll do a share show voice reels as well. So if, I'm, I'll come on to that, but if some of you guys will have voice reels. Some of you don't, so that's absolutely fine. Um, but we'll, we'll do a thing, we'll do a day in the Facebook group where you can share your voice reels and everyone can listen to them and, and that will be really exciting. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. I know this is, um, for some of you, this is totally, you know, early days. Uh, for others, you're further along in your, in your wonderful, exciting journey. But um, please don't worry. Everything will be explained. So, um, ah, good stuff. Right. Um, anything else I need to cover before we get cracking, Lisa? No, I think that's fine. I was going to say, um, if their email is different with their Facebook um, to sign up, um, but, uh, but that'll be in the email tomorrow. So when we get so, basically, so, so what Lisa means is that the Facebook group, so what we do with our Facebook groups is we keep them secret because we don't want other people to see who we've got in our groups. Uh, well, especially the workshop groups, you know, you want to keep that secret and, and private. Um, 
And so if I'm not friends with you on Facebook um, already, then what we do is we take your email address and we invite you, we can invite you to the Facebook group using your email address. But it's only if that email address is the one that you use for your Facebook profile. Yeah. So if you have a different sign in email address for your Facebook profile, let us know so that we can make sure that we use that to sign you, to invite you to the group. Does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> Are you all with me? Are you following? Crystal clear. Crystal yes. Clear. Yes. We good? <laughs> yes. Crystal clear. Fantastic. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, we also, I love using social media. We'll talk a lot about social media in week four, but, um, but I do love social media. You should all be on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Those are the three kind of, and, and LinkedIn. Um, but we do have a hashtag, which is Von Workshop, V-O-N Workshop. So please feel free to tweet, Instagram, Facebook, use the hashtag, and then we will be able to see that. We'll constantly searching for those hashtags we'll make sure that we retweet them share them comment all that kind of stuff which is great for you guys and um yeah it's just a, it's just a nice way to to kind of share share the love so yes lisa's putting our handles at network vo and at and the underscore voiceover underscore network is our instagram and i mine is at rachel naylor twitter and then rachel dot naylor instagram there we go Yes, I did remember. Good. Wonderful. Ah, so, um, right, let's start with, um, where are you guys all in, where are you watching from? Because it's, I know we haven't got a huge amount of you on here, love. We've got a few of you. So if you want to just um, post in, just to kind of, just so I know where everybody is in the world, because it's quite nice to know where you guys are all watching from. And if you're watching this on record, come into the Facebook group and introduce yourself. So we have, we have Stephen Bray in Melbourne, Australia. G'day, Stephen. Um, we have Lynn from Offley Off Hertz, Hertfordshire. Lovely. We've got Claire in London. We have Stuart here, uh, not far from Stonehenge. Lovely. A wonderful Stonehenge. Uh, we've got Tom in London. And anyone else, just feel free to pop it in. Um, or not, that's fine. Um, wonderful. Well, we have people from all around the world. How exciting is that? Welcome, everybody. And uh, Stephen, I know it's, gosh, what time is it with, with you, Stephen? Middle of the night, oh. early morning? Gosh, it's like pretty, pretty. 3 a.m. Stephen, you win. <laughs> you win a gold star. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You're, you're incredible. So um, how fantastic. Wonderful. Uh, and Polly's in London, baby. Woo, wonderful. Well, I'm in West London and um, Lisa's in South London. So um, yeah, it is fantastic to have you guys all with us. Now, uh, and Dean, Dean, oh, yay, on his way to Richmond shortly. Hello, Dean. Yes, wonderful. Oh, fantastic to have you as well. Uh, and Polly, yes, and I know you guys, that was so exciting. You probably, Polly and Dean, you probably actually know each other uh, from promo days. How funny is that? Um, so, um, but yeah, I'll be meeting up with both of you guys later. Wonderful. So really, really excited to have you guys all, um, all with us for this workshop. It's a four week complete guide. And, and by, by that, it's kind of, I am sharing all the kind of starter stuff because when I came into the industry, so I came into the industry over 17 years ago, gosh, um, and the voiceover industry was a very different world back then. So I got into voiceover. So I'm, I come from a, a performing family. My grandfather was an actor. Um, I got into to musical theater at a very young age. I've always loved performing and acting is something that's, that's always, you know, I kind of think of it as like my first love. I, I love performing. I love going on stage. And so it was just really, really young age. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be an actor. And I was lucky. My parents really supported me, which was great. And um, so I went to drama school and at drama school, I had, we had a, a voice teacher um, who she was pretty, she was pretty hardcore and she was pretty tough on me. But I remember her saying to me, you should think about going into voiceovers. And at the time I was like, oh no, I'm going to go work at the National and the RSC and, you know, do all this fabulous, you know, go and get my Oscar and stuff. Um, 
um, and it was, came out of drama school. And those of you that have been to drama school, you know that it's really tough when you come out of drama school. You, you have all this wonderful time in drama school. You're performing and it's all wonderful. And you, you build up to leaving and you come out of drama school and you're like, uh, where'd everybody go? Hello? Oh, is that it? Oh no. Anyway, so that's kind of what happened with me. Um, and so I ended up getting lots of different jobs and, you know, you have to find your way and, and um, trying to get acting work and doing a bit of this and doing a bit of that. And then I saw this course and it was a, it was a two hour, two hour course on voiceovers. And I remember I, I went along, I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to give this a go and just go along and see what it's all about. And I, it was fascinating. I, I was fascinated by it all. And then I had that, I had an amazing moment where I got in front of the microphone and I knew that was where I was meant to be. I knew in every ounce, every part of my body knew that this is where I was meant to be. And, um, but yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, one of those moments I'll never forget. It was a really strong moment. And so I was like, right, great. Okay. So what do I do here? So I just get my voice reel made. Yeah. And then I, I uh, send it off and I get an agent and then all the work comes flooding in. Fantastic. Excellent. And I'll be making loads of money and happy days. And um, so I had my, my voice reel made. And back then, again, different things are very different now. So back then you, I had to audition. I had to pay to audition to have my voice reel made. I know it's quite interesting. So I had to pay 60 pounds, uh, to go along for an hour to read some scripts for the producer. And then if he thought I was good enough, then I could go back and pay 350 pounds to have my voice reel made, which is the voice reel is what gets you work and gets you an agent. It's like a film show reel for, for actors. It's like a CV really. Um, so, so yes, I did my audition. He said, yes, I went and have my voice reel made. And, um, and I was like, yeah. And I remember like, I took it home and, and played it for my family and my friends. And everyone was like, oh my God, it sounds amazing. This is fantastic. And I was like, yeah, brilliant. Awesome. I'm going to rock it. And um, so again, back then, eight, 17 years ago, you had to have an agent. The agents in the voiceover world were kind of like the gatekeepers. So in order to get voiceover work, you had to have an agent. So you would get a voice reel made and then you would send it off to the agents. And then once you've got an agent, then they would get you work. And again, we didn't have MP3s back then. So we had CDs. Do you remember those lovely CDs? And uh, so I had to, I had to make up my, these CDs. And I remember making up the packaging and oh my God, making such a mess of it and trying to figure out my branding and like printing out these packaging and printing out the stickers and trying to get the stickers on the CDs and oh, just making such a mess. And then finally getting it all together and burning and trying to figure out how do you burn a CD? Oh, oh right. Okay. Doing all that. And then taking these CDs in their little packets down to the post office and sending them off. And, um, and like, I remember that first time being like, oh my gosh, this is it. Wonderful. Right. Okay. Sent them off to, to a bunch of agents, lots and lots of agents. And nothing. And then I got started getting, you know, rejection, rejection. And that was really tough. I think mean, the first time was really, really tough. And then it happened again. And I was like, right, six months later, I was like, right, okay, let's go again. Let's go again. And I got rejected again. And this went on for a while and it was really, really hard because back again, you didn't have home studios back then as well. I remember talking about getting a home studio and it was like, I was laughed at because you, you know, back then you had, you needed to be rich. You had to have a lot of money to have a home studio and we didn't have social media back then. I know, crazy. Um, and so it was really hard, but I knew that it was where I was meant to be. So I just, I just was like, right, well, I'm going to go out there and get my own work. And there was no information. So that's another thing about the voiceover world. There was no training. Now there's loads of training. There are lots of events. There are lots of, lots of resources like the voiceover network and the buzz magazine, um, which is the only magazine in the world dedicated to the voiceover industry. Um, but yeah, there was nothing, there wasn't back then. And so it was really hard to get any information. And I'm, um, the thing about the voiceover industry, which is quite funny. So there was a small pool of voiceover artists who were basically booking all the work and they, 
were making a lot of money, a lot of money. This was a small group. They were just basically cleaning up. They would go into Soho, they'd sit in a cafe and they would just wait for their phone to call. And they would go from studio to studio to studio to studio, just recording. And they would make a lot of money. Now it was funny because the acting industry kind of looked down on voiceover industry, thinking that was only for resting actors and it's not real acting. And those voice actors who were in the voiceover world were laughing because they were happy to, for people not to want to come into voiceovers because they were making so much money. So anyway, so there wasn't very much information out about how to get work, how to, to and no training, you, you know, but I decided that this was where I wanted to be. So I just basically started sending my voice reel off to production companies and, um, and, and bypassing the agents because if the agents weren't going to be interested in me, I was, this was where I was meant to be. So I sent my stuff off to um, production companies and I started booking a couple of gigs here and a couple of gigs there. And, um, and that was very exciting. That was, you know, as well as doing all my other um, work, promo work, um, acting work, all sorts of, you know, event managing work, all sorts of things going on. And then, um, and then I had a, um, I guess this is probably like my big break. So I, um, there used to be a newsletter. I don't know if any of you remember PCR? Does anyone remember PCR? Well, PCR, it was a red newsletter that used to come through the post every two weeks and it would have all the casting breakdowns in it. And it was, it was on red paper so that you couldn't photocopy it. I know, how funny. Um, and it came through the post one morning and there was an advert for a voiceover job. And I was like, oh, brilliant. But they were looking for Spanish speaking voiceover artists. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> but I thought, well, I'm gonna write off to them anyway. Now, before you think I was completely crazy, I did say in my, in my letter, cause I sent them a CD and I wrote in the letter, look, I see that you're looking for Spanish voiceover artists, but just on the off chance that you need a, British voiceover artist, you know, here's my reel and please consider me for the future castings. And it just so happened that it landed on the desk the day that they were casting for the voice of Virgin Media. And um, I remember going in for this audition and being really nervous and, oh God, oh. Um, and I did my audition and I went home and I got it. And I, I, I do remember getting the phone call. I was in the gym, actually. I got the phone call. They said, yep, you, you have been booked to be the voice of Virgin Media. And Virgin Media is such a huge, huge company and a huge brand. And I recorded every week for them for nearly 15 years. I know. I know. Um, and I tell, you, I tell people that story because you never know where your exciting kind of break is going to come from. And there are lots of different areas of the industry. And so, but things like, so it's all the telephone. So I do all the telephone voice work for Virgin Media, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Business. I, well, I mean, I used to do a lot of it. Um, I don't do so much anymore because they've got so much of me already recorded that they don't need me uh, to come in anymore. But I did, I did go, I used to go in every, oh, where's Lisa gone? Lisa, where'd you go? That was strange. Where's she gone? She just disappeared. Um, anyway, I'll carry on. Um, that kind of confused me. She, did she do? Did she press something? Lisa, are you still there? Uh, um, hello. Anyway, uh, I've lost my train of thought, and I've just seen that Dean said, "Not the Polly." Yes, the Polly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know. How mad is that? You guys know each other which is very cool. So you both kind of messaged me around the same sort of time asking about voiceovers. So I was like, yay. Um, but yes, so you never know where a job is going to take you. And it can seem like a really kind of mundane, not very important job. And it can end up paying your mortgage for a long, long time and lead to lots of other things. So, but yes, so, <coughs> so I became the voice of Virgin Media recording every week and that was fantastic and uh, very exciting and then even then even then I still struggled to get an agent it was amazing I remember like still being like but I'm the voice of Virgin Media come on man and um, yeah I still struggled for, for quite a while so don't worry about getting an agent and that's the other thing about so I continued to get my own work haha -ha, she's back where'd you go 
Hi. Oh, you disappeared. <laughs> I did. Everyone else isn't that bothered because they're all looking at me. But I was like, I saw you and then you were gone. Um, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> right. uh, yeah, I've had enough. I've had enough. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I started getting my own work and, and then I did manage to get my first agent and that was great. And then I, you know, started booking work and really, really, you know, fun. And, and then I moved agents and then things really started to take off in my career. And that was really exciting. Um, booking lots of TV commercials, promos, yeah, all sorts of things. And, and things were going really, really well. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then things would just drop off and they'd go really, really quiet. And then suddenly it would get busy and I would pick up again and, and then it would go quiet. And I, it really confused me because I was like, I know when I get in the studio, I can, perf I can do the job. Like I know that, that when I'm in the studio, I, uh, you know, people enjoy what I'm doing. It's just those bits in between. And um, yeah, that was, that was kind of, that was really tough for me to get my head around. And of course, you know, when you're, those of you that are actors, you know, and you, things are going well, you usually stick it on the credit card and it's like happy days. And then suddenly, you know, uh, it takes six, you know, sometimes I remember jobs like, I remember a job and it took like six months to be paid. And I was, that was not good. That was not good. Um, so for me, I, my thing was that I realized that the business side of being a voiceover artist was the thing that I was really struggling with. And so I then, started looking into getting training in business and for me like I'm an actor I went to um I did a BTEC in performing arts I used to dance down the, the hallways and um so business was always one of those words that terrified me and just made me feel like <gasps> really constricted and really like Ooh. um but I knew that that was something that I was struggling with to to you know to to get my my career you know to smooth out those like ups and downs I'd want to stay at the top up 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 much more so I, um, yeah, so I basically went and learned loads and loads about marketing, about business. And I totally, I loved it. It's actually really fun and very exciting. And so bringing it all together. And so that's where then, then I, I, I decided that I looked at my voiceover business and saw that networking was really, really important and realized that my best clients were all coming via networking. And so I wanted to create more networking opportunities for me and for other people because there weren't any in the voiceover industry. And so that's where the voiceover network started. So I went for a drink with three other voiceover artists in Richmond, just down the road from me, and thought, this is really useful. We should do this more often. And so I started a monthly little meetup group and, um, and that grew and grew and grew and and then, yeah, basically I, I launched the VoiceOver Network beginning of 2015 as a membership organization in order to help support and strengthen the VoiceOver industry. So there we go. Um, that's kind of a little bit of a, I know I kind of rabbit on a bit, but um, I'm going to go over the course and, and what we've got coming up. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background of me. And in, in yeah, what else have I been doing recently? Doing a lot of video games recently. So I'm in Total War Warhammer. I'm Ilariel the Everqueen. I'm Pharaoh the Courtney Fox in Mutant Year Zero. I am Gemma in Wolfenstein Youngblood, those video games. Um, and I do, I've got a couple of commercials coming out soon. It's very exciting. Uh, lots of promos, Channel 4, Channel 5, Travel Channel, all sorts. So yes, so there we go. That is me in a kind of nutshell. Uh, questions? Oh, wait a minute. Any questions? Yes. Pop them in. Um, I know, Stephen, you've raised your hand. If you want to just type in your question into the chat box, um, that'll be easier. Fabulous. Good stuff. Wonderful. So, um, and what, that was it. That's what I was going to say. So basically, this course has come from me thinking back to when I came into the industry and started in the industry and there was no help and support and there was no information and I want to share that with you guys so that you don't have to go through all that I went through the years of like Rrr. um I believe in sharing information I believe in helping others I believe that there is room for everybody and the voiceover industry is the one of the most exciting industries in the world right now it is the best job in the world yes it really really is and there is more work now than there has ever been. The, the voiceover industry is just exploding right now. Everything is audiovisual. Um, when you look at the e-learning industry, 
it's worth it's oh gosh i can't remember the actual figures it's like it's just worth like i think it's six billion it's gonna no it's it's worth 30 billion is that right lisa it's gonna be worth over 300 billion <laughs> in five years it's like crazy numbers yeah, like that yeah um I'll get them the exact numbers for you next yeah. week. We'll get the exact numbers for you next week. So, you know, if people who like their stats, um, <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, e-learning. A crazy Audio- amount of money. <laughs> Audio books is a massive industry. Now, if you like, you know, reading books, if that's something that you, you really enjoy doing, there is work for you in audiobooks. If you can sit and read, you know, and you, you enjoy reading literature or, you know, then there is work. There's tons, because every book that's ever been written needs to be made into an audiobook. And now they're getting to the point with audio, with audio books that they're now, every book that's being published is now, they're having an audio book as well as the, the uh, printed book. There's so much work. So everybody I know who does audio books, because it is a very niche area of the industry. I mean, they're all booked up six months in advance. So... So that's something to think about. Video games. Oh my gosh, video games is one of the fastest growing um, sectors of the inter- entertainment industry. Video games makes more money than the music and movies industries combined. We ha- you have games that come out that make over a billion dollars in a day. I know, you can't even kind of comprehend that. How is that even possible? No movie has ever even got close to that. So, um, so the video game industry is very exciting. Animation is going nuts now. Things like dubbing as well. Dubbing is, is huge. And I'm not talking just about dubbing into foreign languages. The hot thing right now is dubbing foreign languages into English. Yeah, because Netflix, um, Amazon Prime, all these, all these streaming services, they just want content. They are screaming out for more and more content. And so they're, they're getting anything, Chinese, Spanish, Portuguese, um, Russian, everything translated and, and dubbed into English. So that's another very exciting area of the industry. And we're currently training lots of people up into dubbing because it's, it's, just, it's just so exciting. Um, corporate videos, you know, every company in the world, every company in the world needs to have website videos, needs to have sales presentation videos, a telephone voice, you know, professional sounding voice to, uh, you know, to, on their voice, um, voicemail. So that's just a tiny bit. And I'm going to go through the other areas in a minute. So, but there's lots and lots of really exciting areas of the industry. Um, let me get back to my, I started, um, Yes. So anyway, I've done, done all that. Um, so yeah, so the industry is just going nuts. Now the thing about the industry, there is more work than there's ever been, but there are also now more people than there have ever been in the voiceover industry. Um, which means that, and that's fine. And I really believe that, you know what, there's, there's room for everybody. I, I believe in new talent. I believe that, um, that if we all come together and help and support and share, it will make the industry better. And, um, and so that's kind of a big part of me starting this course. Now, the VoiceOver Network is a membership organization for voiceover professionals. And I set that up because I wanted to create a safe place for voiceover professionals to come to get help, to get support, to learn, to, to go to events, um, and to basically raise, raise the bar in the industry and to strengthen the voiceover industry. Now, the Voice of the Network is a membership organization, and we, we provide, I know some of you are members already, but we provide events, training, the Buzz magazine, the only magazine in the world dedicated to the voiceover industry. We do the voiceover hour webinars, there's online resources, you get a one-to-one with a sound engineer, there's an amazing Facebook group, um, and loads of other things. And you get discounts on our partners' products and services as well. But the voiceover network is designed for working professionals in the industry. It's not just voiceover artists as well. Agents, producers, and casting directors are members. And it's global. I know, which is a bit crazy, Um, which is very exciting. We have members literally based all around the world, including Australia, Stephen. Um, And I was recently out and met Stephen when I was out in Australia two months ago. Yeah, it was a couple of months ago. I I came out to Melbourne and taught a, um, a voice acting for video games workshop which Stephen was part of, which was great fun. And it was wonderful to meet you, Stephen. Um, it seems longer than that. I know. Isn't it? We've done a lot in two months. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. This year. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even, yeah, 2020 is around the corner. Um, 
so uh, I, was, I was asking if you had to do any editing yourself when you started. I didn't, no. I didn't have to do any editing when I started voiceovers because we didn't, I didn't have a home studio. So when did I get a home studio set up? It, not, oh, I can't even think. Um, but not for a while. But yeah, so I didn't have to do any editing in the early days because I always just went into studios. Um, and then I remember getting my home studio kit and just, oh, it was just terrible because I, when I was at college, I had a teacher. You know how teachers tell you stuff and then it sticks? <laughs> I had a teacher who told me that I wasn't technically minded. And so when I bought all of my kit to set up my home studio, I tried to work it and it didn't work and I freaked out and then I panicked and I got really upset and put it back on a shelf and left it there for a couple of years, literally. I know, crazy. Um, and then I got a friend sound engineer to come around and help me set it up. And then I was like, okay, boom, right off we go. And, and then that was great because the other thing about voiceovers, and I know, okay, we've got 20 minutes. I need to keep an eye on the clock. Um, is that you, you get, you get a home studio set up and you can set up a home studio for about 150 pounds. I know crazy, right? So, um, and <clears throat> you really, really can focus, right? do a fantastic home studio setup kit and it's 150 pounds. Um, and that gives you the mic from week three, we'll be going over um, home studios, but it gives you, you get a microphone, headphones, uh, a pop shield, an interface, pretty much everything you need. You, you can then put pillows and a duvet and record, right? You need a mic, you need a, a computer, of course. Um, but yeah, then you're, you're kind of ready to go. Now, there are lots of different elements to having a, a, a home studio. And again, we're going to go into more detail in week three. Week three. We're in week one. Week three, we will go into more detail of home studios. But you can record in your cupboard. Yeah, in your cupboard with the clothes. <laughs> it's actually a really good place just to get started. Now, I don't know, some of you, has anybody got a home studio. I know Stephen, you've got a home studio already. Anybody else on here got a home studio? May just be Stephen. Uh, Stuart, yes, you've got a studio. Okay, fantastic. Anybody else? If not, don't worry. Um, but yeah, so for those of you that don't, you can literally get some, you, you buy the kit and you can, I mean, I, my first studio, I, I literally had pillows and I put a duvet over my head. And when I travel, and I, uh, you know, I go to conferences in America and voiceover conferences and things, you know, I take, I take a portable kit with me and I will set up in the hotel room with pillows and a duvet over my head. Um, so it can be done. It can be done. Obviously, if you're going to be doing, um, oh my gosh, did I not put my phone on silent? Oh, that's shocking. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, if you're going to be doing longer recordings, you want to, yeah, it, I mean, you want to get a, a proper recording studio set up at some stage, but I am a big believer in getting started and starting with what you've got. Um, Stuart says, well, portable stuff plus computer editing. Fantastic. And yeah, again, we're going to go into more of that in week three. So where was I going with this? <clears throat> well, right. so the different areas okay. of, was that yeah. where I was going, Lisa? Well, yeah, I think so. Cause you were wrapping up with, um, talking about the business side of things, yes, yes. Side of things and yep. then home studios, uh, mm -hmm. and getting a, getting your home studio. So that was, that was what I was going to say. I remember now, um, is that when you have a home studio, the world is literally your oyster because you can work with clients anywhere in the world. It's amazing. And it's fantastic and very, very exciting. So I have clients based in America, in Argentina, in Australia, in Thailand, all over Europe, in Dubai, and it's and it's wonderful. It's really, really wonderful. And you can there there are other there are things you need to kind of take into consideration when you have clients all around the world, like time zone and currency change and all that kind of stuff. But it is really exciting because you are not limited by your location. And you you know I've I've been in many sessions where you know, there'll be multiple people listening to the, into the call and directing. You know, I do video games where I'm in a studio in London, have the director 
directing me from LA through my ear. And then we have the developer who's listening in from Sweden. And it's, and it's, just, it's just amazing, totally global and very exciting. So that's, that's a really exciting thing about voiceovers. And for those of you that do travel a lot, I know a lot of actors who go on tour and stuff, you can take your kit with you. You can take a portable kit and you can record on the road. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's an amazing, it, as I said, it's the best job in the world. You guys are in the right place and we're gonna have an amazing four week journey together. Uh, mm. Time zones is a killer when you get your zones mixed up. Yes, yes, I know all about that. And then time changes as well, because we just had our change here. Yeah, saving. And lights, life, uh, life saving, no. <laughs> Lights, <laughs> light saving. There we go. I'm there. Uh, it's um, it's the yeah, coming to the end of a Monday. My yeah. So anyway, and then there's uh, language and cultural language culture. So there are things that you need to consider, but it is very very exciting to to start working with clients all over the place, different parts of the world. Now, I wanted to also talk about the different areas of the voiceover industry. So this is something for you guys to all think about. Think about which areas of the industry appeal to you because I believe that we should do what we love because that it's so much easier it fuels your your soul when you're when you're working in an area of the industry that you love it's much easier to kind of push and sell and you know and get involved and, and go to events than if you're doing going into an area of the industry that you're doing because you just think that's what you should be doing and that's harder and because just coming into the voiceover industry, there are so many different areas. That's what I'm trying to say. So many different areas of the industry. And so what I think you guys should do is just have a think about all these different areas that I'm going to list off now. And you're going to get a recording of this webinar, by the way. Um, and think about which ones appeal to you. Just write them down. And, and then you can go away and just start, you know, just start researching and having a think about um, and listen as well to voiceovers and, 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 and video games or whatever it is that you wanna, wanna work in, go and, and start doing them, listening to those, those parts of, of the industry. Um, I also think as a voiceover, you are watching commercials differently. Yes. You listen to trailers and promos when you're at the theater or wherever yeah. you're listening to it all. And yeah, just kind of like dissecting it. Yeah, you, yeah. Should be, you should be watching um, and there's an art, a good article in the Buzz magazine, uh, the latest edition, where um, uh, Vince, who is an agent at DPM, which is a, one of the big agents in LA, voiceover agents in LA, he talks about watch TV adverts. You know, you need to, if, if you want to be worth what you want to do, adverts, yeah. Yeah. doing commercials, you need to listen to them because you need to know what the current trends are and what's happening and so yeah, so that's really interesting. And, and something for you guys to do over the next couple of days is just start noticing how often you hear a voice. Voiceover artists you will hear in your car, on your phone, from your Alexa, from in the lift, in the tanning booth, um, in, um, on the video games, everywhere you go, you know, in the bus, on the train, um, Everywhere you go, there, you know, you hear voiceover. So it's just really interesting for you guys to just kind of just be aware of that now. Um, so yeah, different areas of the industry. So you've got video games, you've got animation, you've got documentaries, you have uh, commercials, which include TV commercials, online commercials, cinema commercials, um, radio, radio commercials, mm -hmm. e-learning, corporate videos, um, radio imaging. So radio imaging is, you know, the bits on radio where it's like, in, it's 95.8 capital FM, those bits, that's called radio imaging. You have DJ drops. So, um, podcasts, so DJ drops is what DJs use, um, when they're doing their sets. I've done a lot of them. So, DJ light in the mix, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of work in that. <laughs> there's guns out there. Uh, podcasts, um, can't even radio think. dramas, audio dramas, radio dramas, um, 
and then narration. Narration. There's tons. I can't even think anymore. Have I got any more, Lisa? You just say e-learning. E-learning. Yeah. So there's a lot of different areas. Corporate. Corporate audio books. There we go. Thank okay. you very much, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there are a lot of different areas of the industry. Um, but so what I'm going to do over the next four weeks is give you as much information as I can. I will share with you as much as I can and I will try and answer all your questions. So that at the end of the four weeks, I want you all to feel well equipped to then take the next step in your voiceover career, to go out there and start booking work. Yes, um, which is exciting. So how the course is gonna work is that um, each week has a different theme. So this is week one where I'm doing an overview of the industry. So what will happen is every morning you will get an email. Uh, well, it'll be maybe it'll be evening for you, Stephen, uh, but morning for us in the UK, you will get an email from us, uh, from me, which will give you a different bit of information each day. So what I like to feel like it's just giving you kind of bite-sized bits of information so that you can digest it. There will also be tasks, yes, and there's going to be homework. Yes, there will be homework and things for you guys to do. Um, I will be sending you webinars as well as videos, um, articles, lots and lots of things. So each day there'll be, there'll be information. So keep an eye out for that and try and keep up with it. If you have other things going on and then you need to, to catch up on another day, absolutely fine. That's okay. Uh, but it's nice to try and keep up with each day because it just helps you to take a little bit each day and it won't take you long. We say put aside what, half an hour each day, just yeah. to email, go through the information. Some days we will send you an hour long um, webinar, which you can watch then, or you can watch another time, or you can watch, listen to, or, you know, as you're driving or don't watch while you're driving, but listen or while you're walking around. So, um, so we wanted to make this course, fit in with your lifestyles, fit in with your busy lives, fit in with your jobs, with your family, all that kind of stuff. Um, so week one is an overview of the industry. I will be, we will be, I will be talking about agents, voice reels, different areas of the industry. Um, what else, Lisa? Um, how to get voice uh, work, yep. where the work is, all that kind of stuff. And then week two is all about your voice. It's about looking after your voice, it's about getting the most out of your voice. It's about how to take direction as well, because that's a big thing, honestly. And self-directing. So taking direction from people can be very tricky. I'm trying to understand what they mean. <laughs> I know, it really can. And then how to self-direct, because that's the big thing now. Is because a lot of, we now have home studios. Sometimes what will happen in your home studio when you're working is that you will have a director who will dial in and you will hear them in your headphones, whether they're on Skype, or whether uh, IPDTL, there's another couple of other things and I'll explain those later. Um, and they'll be listening in and they'll direct you and you'll read the script and then they'll say, oh no, can you change that? We'll go upward inflection, downward inflection there, speed up there, you just clip that word, sound a little bit more happy, but also sad and be fast but slow. Yeah, honestly, you, get, <laughs> you do get direction like that. Um, so next week, I'll be telling you, I'll, I'll be helping you guys to navigate through that fun and games. Um, and then week three, it's not, it's not all that bad. Lots of directors are amazing. It's just, there's a kind of funny, like we, we have a kind of, we laugh about it in the voiceover industry. Um, but it is often you get, you know, a, a lot of script to fit into a short amount of time, but they want you to sound relaxed. Mm. You've got to talk really fast before you're going to be trying to be relaxed. And it's kind of, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a fun. Uh, also in week two, um, some vocal warm-ups. Oh, yes, vocal warm-ups. Which is um, fun. And all about protecting your voice. And, yeah, so we'll do all, all of that because vocal warm-ups are really, really important. So I'm, I'm vocal very, care. very proud of looking after your voice. This is really, really precious. And you now need to, all of you now need to start thinking of this as, like, this is gold. This is gold. This is your... This is what's going to make you money. So what you need to do is really protect it. And as we go into as it's getting dark outside and it's getting colder. Sorry, Stephen, I'm talking about you. It's getting warmer for you. But here in the UK, it's getting colder. Even when it's getting warm, we all need to protect our voice. Um, be very, very aware of being anywhere that's too loud. Pubs, bars, 
football matches, rugby games, whatever it is, when you start shouting, you damage, you know, you put strain in your voice. So you need to be aware of that. Scarves are really great as well when it's cold. So, you know, keep that warm, hydration, all the right foods, being healthy. And we'll go into more detail of that next week. But I get very passionate about looking after your voice. So, mm -hmm. so that was second week. Third week is all about home studios. So it's getting your home studio not just set up, some of you got them set up, but it's getting the most out of your home studio. So um, there's gonna be lots that week and we're gonna have the wonderful Roger Woods is gonna join us that week as well. He's gonna help us out. He's an absolute whiz. Um, and we might be able to get a couple of other um, superstar um, home studio gurus to come and join us as well that week. And then week four is the Yes, the resistance. I don't know. That's the kind of <laughs> ultimate week where it's all about how to actually get the work. Yes. How do we actually get the work? Because it's like, yes, you can sound great. You can have all the bells and whistles. But if you don't know where to get the work or how to get the work, then it's all pretty pointless. So week four is, the, is a fun one. I really enjoy that. It's all about marketing. I'll, I'll be sharing with you guys all about marketing and um, branding, branding, and networking uh, networking and all that fun and games <gasps> there we go any questions <laughs> <laughs> so a lot I'm, of content and, and the other thing i'm i just want you all to be aware that i will we, i will give you a lot of information over the next four weeks don't worry about you know take it in it, you know i'm going to give you a little bit each day so i want you to absorb it there'll be bits that will stick with you and bits that won't and don't panic, but you've got all this information and, um, and just take, you know, just, just take it, enjoy it, enjoy the journey, enjoy the adventure that we're on. And, um, yeah, there we go. I'm here for you. So, ah, mm -hmm. oh, Polly's very excited. So am I. I'm so excited that you're on this course, Polly. <gasps> um, uh, quick question. Do you book the majority of your work without needing to meet companies face to face? Yes. Yes. Majority of the work. I would probably say 60% of the voiceover work I do is from my home studio. And probably 40% is going into town, into studios. So um, there is a, but there's loads that you can be doing from your home studio. You don't need to meet um, people face to face. Um, it just depends on, on so, so for me, video game work, the video game work that I do, it tends to be in studios because it's the AAA games, which is very cool. Um, and so those ones that you do have to go into a studio for. I do, I do TV ads, I do documentaries, I do TV promos in my home studio. Mm. Yeah. So let me just drink some water. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Stephen says, no, I haven't done homework since 1986. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful um oh, new york new york unique new york oh new york yes uh awesome. Awesome. unique new york new york unique unique new york new york unique. <laughs> <Is it>? <laughs> <laughs> um should we talk to them about the recording yes we should mm -hmm. we should um actually before we come on to that i just would love you all just just can you all just do a little intro for me can you just introduce yourselves um yeah is it be really nice for everybody just say your name, where you're from, um, whether you, you've done any voiceovers or not, um, and what you're hoping to get out of this course. There we go. That would just be kind of nice. Just if you want to just type that in for us and then everybody else can see it too. I'm just going to put my glasses on now because I'm getting my eyes are starting yeah. to grow. I typed in um, what you just said, so that way they've got it to, to visualize. And it's just nice, and then we can all, uh, and if you're watching this on record, come into the Facebook group, please, and, and just do a little, do a little kind of post of, of who you are. And then and that way we can all share, and we can, I want you guys all to connect with each other as well. Um, so, hey, uh, Tom, and then we've got, I'm Lynn Nash from uh, Offley, Hertfordshire. I'm a vocalist and musician and have done a little voiceover work, but really want to get into the industry properly. Oh, and I'm a professional yodeler. Oh yeah. my gosh, that is amazing. You're a yodeler. That's very cool. That is unique. 
professional yodeler. Oh, I love that. You see, right. now I know that about you. We can think about that into your like branding. You should have that in your branding. You should totally have that in your branding. Um, so yes, I know others. Right, here we go. I'm Dean, looking to start in the industry. Um, as for many years, people have said, I've got a great face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and I know Dean. Yes, you you're um, fantastic, wonderful, um, and um, wonderful. What people? Are, I know they're typing away. Yeah. So here we go. We have hello. I'm Stuart, uh, the one near Stonehenge. Oh, I love Stonehenge and all that, those lovely stones. Um, working in broadcasting for many years, including production work, narrated numerous packages, etc. But looking to branch out. Fantastic. Excellent um sounds like a similar background yeah mm -hmm. well it's really interesting because so generally in voiceovers people kind of generally come from two um two sort of streams into the voiceover world yeah. and, and some people come from other parts but most people are either actors who come into voiceovers through acting or broadcasters who come in via the broadcasting route and then you do get the odd um lawyer or they, you know other people who kind of come into it but uh, but that's kind of that's generally the two sort of streams just sort of the actors and then the broadcasters mm -hmm. um, which is quite interesting because the, the actors tend to be much more the sort of creatives and the, 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 the characters and the broadcasters tend to be very good at the technical side of, of voiceovers um, so yeah and singers so, and singers we do yeah a lot of singers a lot of singers um, so, hey, I'm Tom Molnar, born in Slovakia with Hungarian heritage. Wow, wonderful. I'm an actor and looking to improve my voice skill and perhaps try myself uh, in voiceover in games animation. Very nice. Wonderful, Tom. Born in Slovakia with Hungarian heritage. Amazing. Um, well, welcome. And we have Stephen. G'day, everyone. I'm Stephen from Melbourne, Australia. Just started my business and I'm looking forward to this exciting new journey ahead. Being able um, to do 90 to 100 impressions, um, uh, time to put to good use. Absolutely, Stephen. Yes, Stephen is very, very good at doing impressions. So, um, yes, we want to hear some of those um, at some point. Um, so maybe next week we can maybe next week we can get you guys to actually like do the video. Maybe we'll get you on video next week. Mm -hmm. Not like too many of you that it would be too much, and then you can all say something. Um, yeah, I think we yeah. should. Um, we have Polly. Hey guys, I'm Polly from London. I'm a vocalist and compare and would love to explore this side of the industry. I'm a complete novice in recording and voiceover work, so very excited to get started. Oh, yes, I'm very excited for you too, Polly. Um, very very excited wonderful good stuff have we got any more intros while anyone else is, is typing them in and again if you're watching this on record do um, introduce yourself in the Facebook group um, homework <laughs> we have homework already but it's fun homework so what I would like is to hear all of your voices I would like to hear I would like you all to record me a short voiceover now, I leave it kind of open and very vague because I know that um, I don't want to feel, I don't want you to feel kind of stuck and strict in, in a particular style or particular area of the industry. So all I want you to do, and please don't panic. So those of you that have got home studios, use your home studio, great. If you don't have a home studio, that's absolutely fine. I'm not listening for technical ability. I'm just listening to your voice and I want to give you some feedback on your reads so you can take a piece you know an advert from a magazine or if you've got some written text or if you've got a voiceover job that you've done or that you you're going to do you can read that i just want a short short clip very short clip um of you reading you can do it into your phone so you can just record into your phone um take a moment think about what you're reading think about what it's about breathe and read and then what i'd like you to do as well send me the mp3 it needs to be mp3 format and i'd like you to put your name please in the um the file so the file name needs the file name needs to be your name um and then please email it to me uh so if you can get those to me by friday i will make sure i will get you 
feedback and um, and some stuff to work on which is exciting. What about characters? Yes, you can do characters, Stephen. I know you like doing characters. Um, so yes, please do that. We also, here we go. We also have, uh, I'm Maria Vio uh, from my country, Portugal, around 33 years. I, um, uh, but I follow my husband and I'm stuck in England, starting again, everything from the beginning. Ah, yeah. Oh no, don't be stuck in England. England's wonderful and we love <laughs> you here, Maria. So um, it's, it's wonderful to have you um, on this course and, um, and being Portuguese. So having, having more than one, one um, language is an amazing skill to have and it's fantastic. So absolutely embrace that. Accents is also really, really important. So everybody's natural accent, please keep those because they're beautiful. Everything that you've ever done in your life has brought you to this point. Your voice is totally unique, absolutely unique, and it's beautiful. And the, the, the amazing thing about voiceovers is that, yes, you know, people say, oh, you've got a great sounding voice and you should do voiceovers. But voiceovers is about much more than the sound of your voice. It's what we do with our voice. It's the interpretation. It's the same as, as somebody who's a, who's, a, who's a great pianist. You know, yes, the piano needs to be a good piano, but it's how they play the piano that is the real key. And life, everything we've done in our life influence the way, influences the way that we interpret text, the way that we look at words, the way that we think about words, the way that we communicate with people. So your personality, every one of you, your personality is what you need to bring to your voiceovers. So it's really, really important. Um, and your natural accent is, is, is incredible and, and beautiful. Everybody has beautiful accents. But having, doing voiceovers, so for someone like Maria, who's from Portugal, you can do voiceovers in Portuguese because there's work, there's absolutely work out there for Portuguese voiceovers in London. Yes, there is. And, um, and we'll be, I'll give you a whole load of, of contacts in week four. Um, but there's also English voiceover work with a foreign accent. And that's actually one of the hottest things right now and I speak to lots of agents and always ask them what's the thing at the moment and the thing that lots of clients are asking for at the moment is international voiceovers an international nondescript accent an accent that people can't pin down to a particular place some people say that because there are a fair amount of European companies that don't actually want an American accent. Not that American, there's nothing wrong with the American accent. We love that and there's lots of work out there. But I'm just talking that some of the big companies, because of the political situation, maybe not American, because of the political situation in the UK, not UK accent. So they want an accent that is kind of an all rounder, isn't gonna, isn't gonna offend anybody. Um, not that there's, please just don't take this wrong. There is plenty of work for British accents and American accents, but I'm just saying there is actually a lot of work for an international sound as well. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, we also have Claire White from London. I love sending voice notes to everyone. About 30 plus people have suggested to me recently to explore voiceover work as apparently I have a sexy voice. Alternatively, they suggested I start a sex line. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the first option was the best way to go. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, I did a voiceover for a presentation in my last company. It really excites me. Uh, this is completely new for me. Very excited about the next few weeks. Wonderful. Well, I'm so pleased that you decided to come to us instead of starting the sex chat line. Because, yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, wonderful. There's um, still time. There, yeah. but, but let's start with the voiceover. With, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but um, <laughs> fantastic, wonderful, Claire. Well, it's so it's it's just brilliant to have all of you with us today. Um, oh gosh, it's ten past. Right, we better wrap this baby up. So, um, yeah, I would like you all to just do some do go away, do a recording, send it to me, um, and you'll be getting another email from me tomorrow. You'll get a recording of this as well um, tomorrow morning. We'll send you a recording of this so you can watch it back if you would like, and you'll be getting lots of other things throughout the week. Use the Facebook group. I'll send, we'll send you an email tomorrow with the Facebook group, um, a link to the Facebook group so you can join there. Come in and just say hello and share some stuff. And I'm around if you've got any questions. And I will be back next Monday at the same time. Anything else I need to share, Lisa? Yep, that's good.
Yeah. Social media people, go get on Fantastic. social media and do Instagram and stuff using the hashtag Bon Workshop, B O N Workshop. Good stuff. Okay, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the first of um, first day of this wonderful uh, complete guide to getting started in voiceovers. It's been brilliant. Uh, uh, okay, thanks for your time. Yet yeah, 3M starts. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I will appreciate the recording uh, because I just get home. Uh, get at home at 17. Thank you. See you. Wonderful. Wonderful. So yes, Bond Workshop. Brilliant. All right, everyone. Take care. Have an amazing uh, rest of your day, evening, or go back to sleep, Stephen. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>